Hello, you wonderful people! Pokemon Scarlet and Violet are right around the corner, and with their release, we will enter Generation 9 of Pokemon. These games are being set up as something big. Pokemon's first open world game with 4 player multiplayer. And I am cautiously optimistic about it. I'll be honest, BDSP and Legends Arcades kinda burned me a little, but that's a discussion for another day. Here I am to discuss a little mini theory I have. Maybe others have the same idea, but I haven't looked into it, so these thoughts are 100% my own. And is that Scarlet and Violet will be a soft free? of the franchise, just like how black and white were. Now, technically, this is just a theory. From what I know, Game Freak never said that this is true, but there is a lot that supports the idea that black and white were made to be a soft reboot. For one, there's the name. Every set of Pokemon games has a naming scheme. Gens 2, 3, and 4 are named after Mel's and Gems, Gen 6 after Graphical Planes, etc. And now we have Gen 1, 5, and 9. Gen 1, red, blue, green, and yellow, their colors. Black and white, colors. Scarlet and Violet, colors. Oh wow! Colors are pretty significant, right? But there's more evidence for Black and White, now also Scarlet and Violet, being soft reboots. One thing Black and White's most known for is its Pokedex. Many Novan Pokemon are homages to older Pokemon. You've heard it before. Sock and Throw are the Hitmons, Audino is Chansey, Buffalon is Tauros, you get the picture. Now we don't know if Scarlet and Violet will also do this. I mean, Foycoco could evolve into a dragon-like Pokemon, and people have already compared Smallf to Badoo, so I guess we'll see. And now now for the biggest piece of evidence for Black and White being a soft reboot, and the reason I think that Scarlet and Violet will also be soft reboots, is that the stakes and parallels have gone way too crazy in the games and anime. First, let's talk about the games, more specifically the plots and what the evil teams were up to before Gen 5. Gens 1 and 2 had a simple plot. In Gen 1, the evil team was just the Pokemon Mafia who wanted to steal Pokemon and get rich, and you stop them by defeating their leader. And in Gen 2, that same evil team was trying to resurface and get in contact with their old boss, and you stop them them by interrupting their message. Pretty simple plots. But then you get to Gen 3 where the stakes were a lot higher. In Gen 3, the evil team was trying to reawaken weather deities. And in Gen 4, things got even crazier. You had to stop Pokemon Thanos from resetting the universe. In just the span of four Pokemon generations, the threat level went from regional, to worldly, to universal. Think about it. Theoretically, if you lost in Gens 1 and 2, nothing too bad would happen. I mean, the Mafia would take control but everyone would still be alive. But if you lost in Gens 3 and 4, the world would end. But then we get to Gen 5, where the stakes are relatively grunted again. I mean, sure, Getsus wants to control the region, but if you lose, no one will die. And a similar thing happened in the anime. Not really in the stakes, but in how strong Ash was getting. In the Kanto series, he was a total noob who had no idea what he was doing. In the Johto series, he was definitely doing better, and actually earned all of his gym badges. Then in Hone and Sinnoh, he was pretty much at the top of his game. He was offered the chance to become a Battle Frontier Brain, and in the Sinnoh League, they had to write in a guy with two legendary Pokemon just to defeat Ash. Truly, he was becoming the Pokemon master we all knew he could be. And then the black and white anime happened, where they pretty much wrote Ash as an idiot again. Pikachu lost to a Snivy that had probably never battled before, Ash forgot how catching Pokemon works, and in all, didn't look anything like the master strategist he was just a season ago. Which does kinda make sense. Again, Ash was just getting so good. I brought up these two points because the same thing is happening again. The stakes are once again getting too high in the games, and Ash is literally one of the strongest trainers in the anime. Let's start with the stakes of the games. As mentioned, the stakes of Gen 5 are pretty tame. It's just the crazy dude who wants power. But then things start to pick back up in Gen 6. In Gen 6, a maniac wants to commit mass genocide. In base Sun and Moon, the stakes are relatively tame again. I mean, it's just the crazy mom who wants a symbiotic relationship with a space jellyfish. But in the Ultra games, you have to stop a light-eating dragon from absorbing all the light in the multiverse. In Sword and Shield, you have to defeat a devil worm. Then in Legends Arc, as Volo is just Cyrus again, and in the anime, Ash is champion of Alola, and at a bare minimum, is the 8th strongest trainer in the world. And we all know that journeys will end with his rematch against Leon, so if he wins, he'll be crowned the strongest trainer in the world. And even if he loses, he'll still be the second strongest trainer in the world. And thus, that brings me to why I think Scarlet and Violet will mark soft reboots. The stakes of the games have been getting way too high again. I mean, where do you go after multiverse level threats? And in the anime, Ash has pretty much peaked. 
So with things getting pretty crazy in the franchise, the game towers being colors again, and most importantly the games being open world, I believe that Gen 9 will pave a new path for Pokemon. Scarlet and Violet are said to be truly open world games. Legends Arceus opened the door, but the areas were still divided, and Scarlet and Violet will be able to seamlessly enter each area, and challenge each gym or gym equivalent in whatever order we want. How Game Freak of all companies will handle this we'll see, but regardless of whether you believe Gen 9 will take a step back and bring Pokemon back to its roots, they will definitely set the groundwork for future Pokemon games one way or another. I should also mention Noggin's old theory that Gen 8 would have been what reset Pokemon, which it kinda did with Let's Go, so hey maybe he was just off by one generation. Right now all we can do is wonder what Gen 9 will bring. With the anime, people are already wondering if Ash will be retired and replaced, and the evil team in Scarlet and Violet may just be a simple gang of thieves. Whatever it is, I'm hoping that I at least have fun. I'ma be real with you, I'm not a fan of open world games. Finally, I would like to thank you all for watching. I forgot to mention this in my last video, but thank you all for a year on YouTube. I plan on continuing and improving as we go along. When I ended my first half year on YouTube, I only had about 20 subscribers. And now here we are with over 300 at the time of this recording. So if you have the time, share this video and channel around. I honestly think hitting 1,000 subscribers is possible before the end of the year. So help a brother out if you have the time. And if you don't, oh well, I tried. Have a nice day, you wonderful people. was a tiger! Oh, I see. You received the manhood of a tiger. Yes! Yes, did you hear that, lad? Our prince made love to a tiger! All hail Achmed, the tiger fucker. Tiger fucker! Tiger fucker! Tiger fucker! I did not fuck a tiger!